Hello everyone, I'm David Meitzler with Emmanuel Lutheran Church. I thought I would share a little bit with you today about how uh, sounds are selected on the pipe organ and why you might choose one sound over another. First of all, you know, every instrument we have, whether it is a flute or a banjo or a piano, they all make individual sounds. They have a characteristic sound that is unique to themselves. A cello sounds different from a violin, and a violin sounds different from a banjo, and a banjo sounds different from a guitar, and a guitar sounds different from an oboe. You see where I'm going with this? So every instrument has a unique sound. Now, one of the great things about a pipe organ is it's more than just one single sound. Think about for just a moment a piano. Let's go to a piano and see what that sounds like. Well, here we are at a piano. So a piano, as you would expect, makes the sound of a piano. And that's the only sound it can make. And that's all right, because that's the piano. Now let's go to a banjo. Well, now here's a banjo. This is a nice instrument, and it makes a banjo sound. It's out of tune, but that's the sound of a banjo. And that's perfectly all right, because that's the sound a banjo should make. And here's a flute. Here's how a flute sounds. Now back here at the organ console, let's listen to some different sounds of the organ. But what does an organ sound like? Well, you might recognize it if you hear it, but it's not just one single sound. An organ has the ability to have multiple different types of instrument sounds, very similar to what you might find in an orchestra. Some organs, designed called theater organs, are also designed with special effects sounds. In a theater organ, you might hear sounds like a, a siren, a bell, a clacker, um, a horn, a whistle, and other types of things that would be used to accompany a motion picture or provide additional entertainment. Now, in an auditorium or a church or a residence, you'll probably find more typically what would be called a classical organ design which is of more instrumental sound that you'd hear um, in an orchestra. So let's listen to some of those and let's see what some of those are. This particular organ is designed with what are called pistons and the organist will select which sounds to play by turning on a stop. Sounds kind of strange, right? You turn on the stop to make a collection or a rank of pipes sound. And you can turn them off by pushing the piston in. Some other types of organ consoles, like the one at Emmanuel Church, has tabs. They look like pieces of uh, plastic, and they are kind of shaped like a plastic tab, and they can move up and down. Sometimes tabs are also made out of wood or some other uh, material. And then other consoles will have actual rods that you move and push in and pull out and those are also a way to control different sounds. So it really depends on how the organ is designed and how the console is designed. So let's take a look at some of the sounds of this particular organ. Now understand, one organ from, an, from one place to another will have different sounds. So an organ installation in a residence will have maybe different sounds available to it than an organ installation in a church or in a theater or in an auditorium. And even organs of the same manufacturer will have different selections of sounds available based on what the person wants to have at that particular site, that particular installation. Now on this particular organ console, there's the sound of a trumpet. So let's turn on the trumpet. And when I press the keys for the keyboard, Let's listen to the sound of a flute.
This organ also has the sound of chimes. Let's listen to the sound of chimes. Now different organs have a lot of different sound selections available to them, but it's interesting that these are actually, for the most part, all made by pipes. And the way the pipe is designed, whether it's a combination of different kinds of metal or some type of wood, and the shape of the pipe, whether it is cylindrical or box, the length of the pipe, and then what types of um, additional features are part of the construction of the pipe, all of that has to affect the sound in some way. Some pipes have uh, stoppers at the top and some are open. Some pipes have additional valves on them and that lets the air through in different ways. Let's listen to the sound of a bassoon. How about the sound of a clarinet? Now you might ask, who decides which sounds get played at what time? Well, basically, the organist does. The organist will choose what sounds to play for a particular piece of music based on the setting of the music, what it might call for specifically by the composer, how the setting or the music is used in a worship service or a performance or a recital of some kind, and also what the capabilities of the organ are. So some organs are very small and very... Um, simple or let's say modest and other organs are very grand and large and fill up huge spaces and you can pay, play the same piece of music using those two different extremes of an organ and you can select the sounds which are appropriate for that particular organ and that uh, particular space at that time. So there's a lot of flexibility in the selection of voicings. Now some voices are more appropriate than others. For instance, um, if I turn on all the different sounds here, make this as loud maybe as I can do for now, you know, let's just say, and I play Silent Night. Well, that's a little bit too much, right? That seems a little too strong for Silent Night. And, um, so Silent Night, although it was not um, prescribed or, you know, dictated by the composer, uh, Franz Gruber, uh, you kind of get a sense that that sound or that's, that particular song might be a little softer. So different sounds for different pieces. Now another song might be um, the uh, hymn song, This Is The Feast. What would you use for that? Would you use very soft strings like... Um well, you could if you were maybe playing it for communion, but you really need to have, you know, more oomph to the sound, right? So the organist would intentionally select stops which are loud enough and appropriate. So different sounds are used at different times depending on the type of music, where it's used in the service, and maybe what the composer intended. They have, they have rights too, you know. Now to make things even more interesting, some organs are entirely digital electronic, some are analog electronic, some are a hybrid combination of electronic and true pipe, and then some organs are true pipe. 
And even then, you might have an organ which has all natural true pipes and it will have an electronic switching uh, mechanisms in the console. So the most modern organs are still used with a lot of traditional construction and home, um, handcrafted pipes along with electronic switching systems and um, parts in the console and also the electrical components. So it varies a lot in how the organ is made depending on what the installation is, who the builder is, and then how it's designed. And then from there, different pipe sounds will have some different characteristics too. So a trumpet on one particular manufacturer's organ will have subtle differences and sound different than a trumpet of another manufacturer. And then you could even have the same manufacturer with the same trumpet stop producing an organ for one location and another, and it will have some different characteristics in each one of those places. So when you see the different you know, nomenclature, the different sort of identifying names of various organ stops, understand that it sounds kind of similar in, a, in, its, in its timbre and its um, uh, overall sound, but this might have subtleties which will vary from one location to another. So there's a lot of variability in organ design and also organ sounds. Now another feature that's really great about organs is that you can have multiple voices playing at different times. So for instance, I can have one keyboard playing a certain sound where I can have another keyboard playing another sound. So for instance, if I play this, that's the sounds of some flutes. Now let's say I want to have a solo voice play. Here's the solo voice. Hear the solo voice? That's the solo voice. So the organist can choose a whole lot of different sounds, different combinations, and that all adds to the color and the different effects that the music does provide. So this was just a quick little demonstration of some of the different sounds that are available through an organ. There are many more, and also how they're used can be very diverse. So we'll save that for another time. In any event, I hope you enjoyed our explanation today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.